Hello and welcome to the Orwell Astronomical Society podcast for February 2015. This month the days continue to lengthen, but this time of year tends to give a number of cold, clear nights, so hopefully plenty of opportunities to see the stars. The Milky Way is something that you don't see too often these days, given the ever-increasing light pollution around us. But if you manage to get away from any lights on a really clear night, look out for a hazy band going across the sky. This month, at around 8 o'clock in the evening, it will be going from the northwest to the southeast. If you look at this band through binoculars, you will see that it is in fact millions of stars packed close together. Now we are looking towards the centre of our galaxy, which we call the Milky Way, after this milky white hazy band. The galaxy is a very large flat rotating spiral of billions of stars, and we are about two thirds of the way out from the slight bulge at the centre of this spiral. When we look towards the centre, we see this vast collection of stars stretched out in a band across our sky. To confirm that you are seeing the Milky Way, spot Cassiopeia, the W-shaped constellation in the northwest, and the Milky Way runs straight through it. Now on to the Moon. New Moon this month is on the 18th, but as February is so short, and with the new Moon falling in the middle of the month, there is no full Moon in February this year. And now on to the planets that are visible this month. Mercury is visible this month, especially around the middle of the month, and it can be seen around 7am in the southeast, very low down, about 4 degrees above the horizon. Venus becomes a nice evening object at its best at the end of the month, just after sunset in the west-southwest, although it is a very bright object that you can't miss in the evenings now. Mars is quite good this month. Look out at around 6pm towards the end of the month and you will see Mars in the constellation of Pisces to the west-southwest, around 20 degrees above the horizon. There's something good to look out for on the 21st of February and a few days either side when Mars and Venus will appear to be very close together in the sky and very low in the west-southwest in the early evening. Jupiter is still magnificent. Look at it in the evening and again an obvious bright object high in the sky in the constellation of Cancer the Crab. So look out for it in the south around midnight or thereabouts. Binoculars on a tripod will give great views of the four Galilean moons and possibly some detail on the planet itself. Saturn is a morning sky object best seen around 5am. Look out for the bright yellow object in the south at around 20 degrees above the horizon. The rings will be a magnificent sight in even a small telescope or binoculars. There are no meteor showers worth looking out for this month, but if you haven't seen Comet C2014Q2 Lovejoy yet, then please do so, as it now has technically passed its best, but is still a nice sight, currently, and that's the end of January, in the evening sky to the right and slightly above the Pleiades. Check out on the internet for the exact location, but do have a look. It's a lovely green fuzzy object, especially in binoculars. Now on to constellation watching. This month we are going to concentrate on the North Celestial Pole. First find the North Pole star, Polaris, and remember to use the pointers of the plough to locate it. Now if you're in a very dark location, try to make out the little bear, Ursa Minor, which is a similar saucepan shape to the plough, but this time as the pole star at the end of the handle, or the little bear's tail. Now we've already looked at Cassiopeia earlier, on the opposite side of the pole star from the plough. Now look to the north of the pole star, and there are a lot of not very bright stars, most of which belong to the constellation Draco the Dragon. To the south of Polaris, between the plough and Cassiopeia, we find a faint set of stars that form the obscure Camelopardalis, or the giraffe. I hope that this podcast has given you some ideas of what to look out for over this month. There is plenty more out there to see, and I recommend that you look on the internet, astronomy magazines, or in an astronomy book or sky map to show you what else is out there and where to look for it. Don't forget the ever useful planisphere, which tells you what's where at any date and time of the year, and these are readily available from most good bookshops. That's all for this month. Listen out next month for March's highlights. Bye for now.